you always feel like you're running out of time? These days, it seems that everybody's running out of time or never have enough time. Everyone's too busy or time poor. But one thing is certain, everyone still needs to know what time it is. And you can't beat the old classic analog clock. The clocks start out as old weathered hardwood fence posts that I think might be iron bark, but I'm not sure. If you know what it is, drop a comment below. You definitely want to check for nails or any other metal objects before milling any old reclaimed timber. I've made a few clocks in my time and they're an easy build. There's really no limit to what size, shape or material you can use. And the beauty of an analog clock is that once you've learnt analog time, you actually don't have to read the clock to tell the time. You don't even need numbers. A quick glance at the position of the hands and you know exactly what time it is. I think these clocks are a simple, timeless design that will fit into any decor in any room of the house. This old hardwood has great character and beautiful grain and colour. And with so many old timber fences around in the suburbs, it's not too difficult to get your hands on some. Sometimes you'll see old fences out on the curb for pickup, or just stalk your local fence installer. The milling process for this board is very different today compared to seven years ago when I first made these clocks, but the rest of the build hasn't changed much at all. The post is milled flat and square on one face and one edge using the jointer, then run through the thickness so to flatten the opposite face parallel, and the second edge is ripped parallel on the table saw. Nowadays I let machines do most of the work, but not always. This time I got out the block plane to chamfer those long edges and enjoy the peace and tranquility, and it was very satisfying. But enough of that. With the piece now at final width, I cross cut it to that same dimension so each blank was square. To chamfer the short edges on these blanks, I went to the disc sander, but it spins too fast and was burning the wood. This is where the variable speed belt sander was perfect. I was able to wind the speed right down, getting a perfect result without any burning. I marked the centre of each blank and drilled an 8mm hole for the shaft of the clock mechanism. I then marked the centre of the block along each edge so I could use this 12 segmented circle I found online and print it out to mark the location of the holes for the hour markers. I used those centre marks to line up the template on the face of the clock and then used an awl to mark each hole location for drilling. I set the depth stop on the drill and used a 6mm brad point bit to drill each location. Next job was to cut a recess in the back of the blanks for the clock mechanism. I just traced it out and then used the Forstner bit to remove the bulk of the material. The recess will be finished off using the router table, but to do that I needed to make a guide to attach to the router table. 
I calculated what size hole I needed and rough cut it with a jigsaw and then nailed on these strips of wood so I could cut the final hole with a flush trim bit. I then screwed the guide directly onto my router table and used a half inch spiral bit to cut the final recess in the back of the clocks. This timber is really hard and the router bit was grabbing a little, so in hindsight I should have removed as much material as I could before this step, but I got there in the end. The hour markers are made from 6mm solid brass and I used the same jig I used all those years ago to cut the rod to repeatable lengths. The cool thing about this jig is that it has a hole drilled in the bottom to let the off cuts fall out and the jig is incredibly simple. Another way to cut brass rod is to just use a hacksaw. The brass rod is a friction fit in those holes as you can see, so gluing them in isn't necessary. But if you want peace of mind, CA glue would work well. With the hour markers in place, they get flush sanded to the face of the clock. and then hand sanded with the grain of the timber up to 400 grit wet and dry. The finish for the clocks is my favourite for small hardwood projects like these, beeswax. I prefer to apply it by hand. I think it's a better application process and it's like moisturiser for woodworkers. After a few hours I polish off the beeswax for a silky smooth finish and then put it all together. The time can be adjusted from either the front or the back. If you've watched through to the end, I appreciate you taking the time to watch and invite you to take a little more time and watch this video on how I made these clocks seven years ago with only basic tools in a very different looking workshop.